Hello and welcome to Padstow Baptist Community Church. My name is Jamie and I'm one of the staff here and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our church. We've been part of this community for about 70 years now. We are a church who are passionate about Jesus and are also committed to showing love and support to those in need in our community. If you're interested in being part of our church services during this time, then I encourage you to join us live on Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. on our online church platform. We would love to connect with you there. In the meantime, please visit our website at www.pbcc.org.au to find out about all of our other ministries and ways in which you can be involved or for us to connect and support you. Please don't hesitate to give us an email or shoot us a call or join our services online at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. on Sundays. Our details will follow this video and we hope to meet with you soon. Hello and welcome to Padstow Baptist Community Church Online. So glad that you could join with us today. My name is Grant, I'm one of the pastors here. We're really looking forward to today's service. We're going to have a great opportunity to worship together, which will lead us into a time of communion. And I, I want to remind you to grab some bread and juice if you haven't done that already. The bread that represents the body of Christ broken for us and the juice that represents the blood of Christ shed for us what an incredible thing it is that jesus died on the cross because of his great love for us he has saved us and we want to celebrate that today we also have some uh, great testimonies from the 24 hours of prayer that took place uh, last wednesday we're going to hear about that into story time and we're looking forward to to hearing from gabby went who who will be sharing today's message but before we do that and before we worship, I want to commit our time to the Lord. So let's pray together. Loving God, thank you for the privilege and opportunity that we have to worship you today. Thank you for your amazing love shown and expressed in all that the Lord Jesus did on this earth and accomplished on that cross for us. We want to worship you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and fill us afresh into each of our rooms, our living rooms, our homes, wherever we may find ourselves today. We want to be filled with you afresh today, dear Holy Spirit. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our ears, that we may hear your voice. And may we give you the, the praise and worship that you are worthy of. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's worship our great God together now. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see
to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you.
Yeah. 
have been faithful All my life you have been so, so Hi everyone, I'm going to be leading us in a time of communion. Um, so when I was praying about um, what what God wanted to talk about um, during this time, um, he brought up a moment I had with him. Um, so over the past couple of months, the challenges have been like a training ground for my faith in Jesus. Um, earlier in the pandemic, I found myself frustrated and angry at God. Um, Kyle and I had experienced significant changes to our income and we were trying to adjust to, well, I was trying to adjust to working from home and also having Sophia and Emily at home. Um, thankfully, Jesus was faithful and pursued me um, in my anger. Um, and when I eventually turned my heart towards him, he gently and lovingly reminded me, or sorry, asked me if my relationship with him was dependent on my life being happy. Um, that was a pretty um, confronting and convicting um, question. And my initial response of, of course, it's not dependent on my life being happy, reminded me of Peter in um, John 21 when Jesus asks him if he loves him um, three times. Um, that's when I realized that Jesus was calling me into a deeper relationship with him. And by asking me this, he was asking if I was willing to take the next steps and trust him. <clears throat> so in taking communion today, um, I want to remember that Jesus died on the cross, not only to save us, but to bring us close to him. Um, that our relationship with him is beyond anything that we have here in, in the world. Um, I also hope we can open ourselves to the Holy Spirit and allow Jesus to disciple us um, through this time. So um, if you want to get your bread and juice ready, um, we will have some of, bre have some of the bread and then... Um, We'll drink together. So. Now I'm going to pray. Father God, thank you for this time we've been able to spend together. Lord, I pray that um, wherever we are, your presence is felt. Um, and Lord, thank you that you pursue us and that you pursue intimate life-changing relationship with us. Um, I pray that, um, Lord, we would just be open 
to living our lives um, with you at the center. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. We're really excited about the um, 24 hours of prayer that happened on Wednesday. Thank you so much for getting involved. We were really encouraged um, that, that so many of us are just committed, and we know it already, but so many of us are just committed to praying for our church, for our community, for our family and friends, for our world. We know that um, COVID-19 has just made things feel so out of control for lots of people and so unknown. And so to be praying so intentionally about um, where God's taking us, about how God's meeting us, spiritually where breakthrough can come, we're just so grateful. And the feedback we've had has been really encouraging, really inspiring, really helpful. So please keep feeding back and keep praying. You know, we can pray anytime you guys know that as well. So thank you all very, very much. And we're going to hear from John now, um, who's sharing some of what God spoke to him during his time that he prayed. Thanks, John. Well, as you know, um, we've just had, uh, with the 24 hours of prayer is, is still going. It's been going since um, from 12, 12 a.m. today, Wednesday, to, to 12 p.m. It finishes at 12 p.m. Firstly, I've got to take my hat off to, to those who prayed between 12 a.m. And, and 6 p.m. Praise God for you people that, that got up dur during the night. Um, I, I allocated myself uh, the two the two 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 uh, two thirty shift um, this afternoon, and and I just I had a great great time with the Lord, just just praying praying for my my own family, praying for as as it said on the sheet, praying praying for 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 leaders, uh, praying praying for our praying for our church, and um, and and then I had a time of um, just listening to God. And particularly um, as I read that those verses out of Ephesians, those th those words just stood stood out to me. Um, of stand firm, you know. Um, I'm sure you know. I think we all know that we certainly live in 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 troubled days, and really God is calling us. The words He gave me was to stand firm in Him. And through and through him, to stand stand firm against Satan and his deceive, de, uh, deceiving plans upon this time and upon his people. He is out there trying to, to certainly deceive us at, at this time. That to stand firm together as as a church, um, a, as we plan for our our church future. He also said to me to stand firm in him. If you're if you're experiencing hard times, um, you know, just stand firm in Him and look to Him through this time. And certainly, just we need to, as a church, stand firm and 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 keep praying. So I I just praise God for those words He He, he gave me, and that's certainly um, a challenge for, for myself to um, to to um, stand firm. So it was just a, you know, it's been a, a great 24 hours and, and we pray that uh, God will certainly hear and answer our prayers. Hi, my name's Simon and this is uh, Storytime, the segment in our service where we look at what God's been doing in our community recently. Uh, we've, we've also been asking some questions of, of uh, our members and one of those questions is what has been bringing you joy at the moment? Well for me, um, I've had the opportunity of, of uh, working from home um, which has been a bit of a struggle on our internet so I ended up working at uh, my mum's place uh, which, is, which has been great. Uh, she's living by herself so the opportunity to spend some more time with her has been been good um, but I've also been able to uh, stop a bit more and, and spend some more more time in the word uh, so uh, that's been a source of joy as well and uh, the other question is how has has God been providing for you well in the, in those uh, 
same situations, I, I guess. Uh, the opportunity to spend more time with, with mum uh, and, and also my family, um, as well as, yeah, just holding on to the job. Uh, it, it hasn't affected our, our industry too badly at this point, so um, uh, God has certainly been providing uh, abundantly throughout that situation. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, and uh, here are some more answers that uh, others have, have got as well. Well, I think uh, I'm enjoying spending time with the family. Funnily enough, we tend to spend a bit, little bit more time as uh, not many places for people to run away to. Um, work's been great. Um, everyone's got work, everyone's busy um, around us. And yeah, um, we've got God God's providing for me all the time. Um, obviously the easier things to look at is, is with work. We've been very, very busy. Um, and when we look like we're getting quiet, we get people from nowhere ringing us and saying, oh, will you quote us on this job? Will you quote us on that? So it's, things have been very good. God, God always provides. That's been my experience, no matter what, Corona or not. Hi guys. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned in my sermon, um, that we were ordering some postcards to use as invites to people and uh, contacts that you might have. Um, so we've had them made up now and they'll be available uh, from this weekend. So um, if you'd like some, uh, you feel welcome to come down and grab some between 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. in the afternoon, just at one of the shops. Um, we'll have, the, have them available. Or if you can't do that, if you're at work or through the day um, and you need them to be dropped off to you, just let us know either by a phone call or a text or something like that, and we can drop around some. Um, so it's, it's just a really simple invitation. We encourage you to uh, use it with the contacts you have that are, that are personal to you um, or that you've been praying for. Uh, a personal invitation is always best. Although sometimes when you uh, are walking around or you're uh, in and out of things, maybe God just prompts you to um, give someone a card to invite. So it's there and available if you've got it with you. So please do that. Um, we'll also be posting graphics on Facebook and sending them out via email so that you can share those with people as well um, just through through online means. So that'll be an, another way that you can do that as well. So we just want to uh, encourage you to be thinking and praying about that uh, in the coming weeks and utilise these as much as you can. Hey kids, hey adults, how are you all going? It's Anne here again. So nice to be meeting you in your lounge rooms or wherever you are. Um, today we're doing things a little bit differently so I've been very intentional about not sending a whole lot of stuff to you this week um, or an expectation of what you're going to do in this time because a lot's going on for kids and for teachers and for parents this week so I know that you guys are all heading back to school and I know some of you will be so excited about that and I know some of you are going to find that a little bit difficult because that's happened faster than you thought. And so I just wanted you today to take some time to do something fun because there's going to be work to do this week in a different way than what you've been doing the last few weeks. So if you haven't already, grab something that you love playing with for church today and something that's creative and fun to do. And you can choose whatever you like. I think that's a, that's a really important thing that you guys can do today. And um, don't forget to join us this afternoon if you're free at four o'clock for our Zoom. The link's gone out in the email to your mums and dads already. So if you're free this afternoon and you want to come and say hello and hang out and play some fun stuff, then we would love to see you on Zoom this afternoon. Now our video today is a little bit different. It's about some really great things that Jesus told his friends to do and some things that he told them not to do. And they're true and they're helpful for us as well. And so we're gonna watch a video about how Jesus tells people not to worry and how we can trust God no matter what. And so we can trust him to look after us and care for us and we can pray to him about anything that is worrying us because we all worry sometimes, but God can help us. And so he loves us so much and he's working for our good all the time. Even if we can't see it, we can believe it and know it. And so I especially wanted to read this verse to you. It's from Philippians 4, verse 16, and it said, says, Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. Then God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds 
He will do this because you belong to Christ Jesus. God's peace can never be completely understood. And so I just thought that was a real encouragement to us that we can tell God about everything that happens, no matter what it is. He's interested and he's working and he loves us. And so today as you watch this story about God telling his disciples and his friends about not to worry because God's looking after them and God knows what we need, I want you to think about what you learn about God in this true story that we're watching. I want you to think about what you might be worried about at the moment that God can help you with. And I want you to think about who you can talk to and who you can pray with about it. Because it's really helpful to tell God about it. It's really helpful to tell God about it with someone else. And they can be talking to you about it as well. So maybe your mum and dad or your sister or your brother, your grandparents. There are great people in your lives that you are able to see and talk to at the moment that you could have a really good conversation with and share some of that stuff. So, so please do that. And before we watch our video, today I'm going to pray for you guys. So let's do that now. Jesus, we want to thank you that you love us so much. We want to thank you that you know everything that's going on in our world. You know everything that's going on in our minds and our hearts and our spirits as well because you love us so much that you're interested in who we are and you're always working in our lives as much as we let you. God, we know that you have plans that are really good and we can trust you no matter what. And God, as we head back to school this week for kids and for teachers and for parents who help us get ready and have everything we need, we just want to pray for your peace. We want to pray that we have really good time interacting with our friends and the people that we work with. We want to pray that you'll help us to concentrate. We want to pray that you'll protect us and you'll help us to make wise decisions. And we just want to thank you that we can tell you anything, anytime, any place because you're our good father and you love us so much and we pray all these things in your name Jesus Amen Stories of the Bible Don't worry This is Jesus hey who is the son of God and the savior of the world Jesus did many amazing things He taught everyone about God's love healed people from their sickness, and even calmed storms. One day, Jesus was speaking to thousands of people. Hey, Jesus! When someone asked him about money, he told them a story and tried to explain to the people that our treasure is not on earth, but in heaven. Then he turned to one of his disciples and said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear, for life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Uh, yes. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, because God feeds them, and you are far more valuable to God than any birds. Uh, yeah, I think so. Do you think that by worrying about anything, you can add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't do a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? That's a good point. Look at all the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, the great king of Israel, in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown away tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. And don't worry about what to eat or what to drink. Hey, okay. Many people worry about these things, but God already knows what you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, for it makes God happy to take care of you and give you his kingdom. So share what you have with others and give to those who need. There you go. Thank you. Sorry. Hi. Then you'll be storing up treasure in heaven. And when your treasure is in heaven, it's going to be safe. No thief can steal it. And whatever. And no bug can destroy it. Man, whatever. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also.
Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday Church. It's lovely to be here with you all. I'm Lisa. Um, it's so great to have some easing of our restrictions, but we are keeping our services online at the moment, but stay tuned for that. We wanted to say happy birthday to the people in our community having a birthday this week. We hope it's a really special day for you. We wanted to say thank you to everyone who prayed. On Wednesday, we had 24 hours of prayer for our church and our community. It was a really fabulous time and we know that some people really uh, connected with God in that and we're looking forward to hearing uh, what God said and what you're feeling about that and how God is going to move in our church and community. So stay tuned for that. We're excited that Renew Community Store is opening again this coming tomorrow, uh, this coming Monday. It is open Monday to Friday, but not on Saturday at this point in time. So you can come out and find a bargain there. And just to let you know, if you're coming down to the church for any reason, we are now using a new procedure. When you come into the church, um, just to answer some questions and have your temperature checked, it, the information was sent out in an email earlier in the week. Uh, so just look for someone who may be walking around with a the thermometer when you arrive to church. That'd be really helpful. Thank you for that. Just a reminder about our giving options. Uh, you can give to uh, direct deposit uh, on the website or at the bank. You can drop money in at the shops while you're here. You can put money aside and we can pick that up. So next Sunday is our last Sunday of the month and we would love to uh, receive any offerings for May if you have some held aside. So please contact me if that's the case. There's also opportunity to give by text giving. You text the word give, I think I've been unclear about that, sorry. Uh, text the word give to this phone number and you can uh, specify the amount you want to give there. So that's another option as well. I'm going to pray for our offering now, so let's pray together. Lord God, we want to thank you that you are with us. We want to thank you that you are our powerful and mighty God. We want to thank you for the life and the salvation that we have in you and just the, the experience that we have of you and knowing that you are with us and for us. We want to thank you for hearing our prayers and for partnering, that we are partners with you in what you are doing in this world and in our community. We offer ourselves to you, we offer our gifts to you, uh, just because we love you and we want to follow you in all that you are leading us in. So we pray that you would make that really clear to us this week and that you would provide all that we need to serve you in the way that you call. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, my name is Brody, and I'll be reading from Esther, chapter 4, verse 6 to 17. So Hathach went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text, the Edict for the Annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther and explain to her, and he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence and beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. Hathik went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, all the king's officials and all the people of the royal provinces Know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the golden scepter to them and spares their lives. But thirty days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back his, this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you are alone, for all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish, and who knows but what you have come this 
to your royal position for such a time like as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. Today we are going to be jumping out of 1 Thessalonians and into Esther, as I am doing an assignment for Bible College. So please, enjoy. Um, thank you, Brody, for reading out the Bible passage, which is Esther 4, verse 6 to 17. You did such a great job. To begin with today, I'm going to tell you a story. Storytelling is an important part of faith, and I believe as followers of Jesus, we should follow his teaching. Um, and Jesus spoke in parable and used storytelling as an expression of this through his life on earth. The story that I will share with you today is an imagined version of a real biblical story. It is a fictional narrative that I have written in order to express the reality of the story. This is found in the book of Esther, but I would encourage you not to open up your Bibles until after I finish this narrative so that you can remain present in the um, story that is going on. Let me just pray. God, I just pray that we come here this morning and tonight, if you're watching at night, with open hearts and minds to hear from you. Jesus, I pray that as we open up your word that you are speaking to us. I pray that we can use women like Esther um, to learn courage and strength and know of your power. Amen. When I was younger, I had this idea of what my life would be. I would grow up to become a beautiful woman I always imagined that suitors would come from far and wide to meet me and my family. They would, my father would marry me off to a kind and handsome man who would look after me, give me a family in return for my hand. My husband would work and I would raise our children. I would be a good wife. I never imagined that I would end up here as the queen married to the king. My cousin Mordecai helped me get here to become who I am today. It all started okay. I've been living with the king for some time now, having banquets, living in luxury, not having to worry about how to afford to live month by month. But I wish I never became this. It was ridiculous to think that I could do this. I'm just a girl. Our people are in danger. The king's right-hand man, Haman, is coming after us because of our Jewish heritage. And I have no power here. Mordecai says that I must help them. I am their advocate to the king. But how can I do that without disobeying him? How can I, the wife of the king, just waltz up on to him and demand that he save my people? It's crazy! I will be punished for my audacity. And once he finds out that I'm a Jewish woman, I will be killed with my people. Oh God, why is this happening to me? Why did you put me here? I've always wondered what my purpose was. I imagined myself taking care of my household, serving God, and loving my husband and children. Not this. My purpose is not to do this. It can't be. I am a wife. Somehow I've become the wife of a king. But that doesn't mean that this should fall to me. I'm supposed to just wear beautiful outfits and stand by my husband, raise up a son to one day take over the throne. I am not supposed to go to the king unannounced and then on top of that tell him that I am a Jewish woman? Mordecai must be going mad. He said, and I quote, For if you remain silent at this time, 
relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Come to your royal position for such a time as this. Why would God choose me, a young girl, to save his people? I am a nobody. I just happened into this situation. I got here because the king showed favour to me. And I'm supposed to now hold the weight of my people and carry that responsibility. I am so afraid. I'm scared for my people who are being targeted. I'm scared of my fate after this. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid because I know despite my attempt to talk myself out of this, I must help my people. I am their last hope. I have found favour with the king before, so maybe I can do so again. Maybe Mordecai is right. Maybe I was born for this time exactly. Maybe this is the purpose that I have been searching for, to bring safety and justice for my people. I've heard stories about God, the creator of all things, who is all-powerful, who has promised to provide for my people my entire life. With that power, I can do this. I will do this. I'll tell Mordecai to go and gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. They will not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as they do. When this is all done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Maybe I was put in this position for such a time as this. I find using this form of first person narrative really helps us delve deeper into the emotional responses of biblical characters. We hear these stories again and again in church, scripture, Sunday school, sometimes even the media. So much so that we become overexposed to them. Stories like Esther's, which shows an incredible woman's courage and step out in faith, can lose its miraculousness. We can miss the power that God's people have when he is on their side. Or it can go the other way, where we hold hold the characters of the Bible up as heroes. We idolize them, and in doing so, make their acts feel impossible for ordinary people like us to do ourselves. In this story, we see Esther's humanity. She is afraid. She is uncertain. She is just a young girl who ends up doing a remarkable thing through God's strength. There are three main points that we can draw out from Esther. Now, I'm not going to read the Bible verse again to you guys because Brody already did that so fantastically. But if you want to open up your Bibles, um, you can follow along. We won't follow directly the verses, but if you want that as a reference point, um, it's Esther 4, verses 6 to 17. So there are three main points that we can draw out from Esther. Esther is courageous in the face of adversity. There is so much working against Esther in her story. Firstly, she's a woman, which already leaves her with disadvantages and limitations. Secondly, she's married to the king, to which there are different rules and regulations that the wife of the king must follow. Thirdly, she's a Jewish woman, and her people are being targeted by the king's right-hand man. And finally, she must risk her own life to save her people. This is not an easy spot to be in. But through all of this, Esther maintains her courage. I don't personally believe that courage and fear are opposites. 
I think often we feel that if we are afraid, we cannot be courageous. The fear must disappear for us to be brave, but I don't believe that's the case. I believe the most courageous moments that a person can have come when they are overwhelmed by fear and they choose to stand up against it regardless. That is courage. A few years ago, I was helping out with the Twinkles program, which is the program we run, we, we run sorry, for children aged one to five um, in our church. And while we were having our talk that morning, um, we, we heard the fire alarm go off within the church. We later found out that this was by our dear friend, Jamie, um, who had burnt some popcorn in the kitchen while he was making them for the teenagers. But at the moment, we didn't know this. Both leaders and children didn't know what was happening. So we followed procedure, we took the children outside and lined them up in the black back playground so that we could do a head count. I could tell one little girl, she's about four years old, was quite scared just from the look on her face. And so I went over and I knelt down beside her and asked if she was okay. To which she replied, when I get scared, I close my ask, my eyes and I ask God to make me really, really brave like this. And then it's okay. Which not only was one of the cutest things that I had seen or heard in a long time, but also such a simple and beautiful display of courage from a, uh, from a girl whose routine had suddenly and unexpectedly changed. She was afraid. Right now we're like this girl. Our world has suddenly and unexpectedly changed. COVID-19 has disrupted our everyday lives in a way that we could not have prepared for. There is fear, uncertainty and stress circulating through our communities, our nation and our world. It's inescapable. Courage and fear are not opposites. Courage is our response to fear and lucky for us, God has an abundance of courage that is accessible to us. When we put our trust in him, as Esther did, he will walk with us and help us to carry the weight of our burdens. He is greater than anything that comes up against us. He sustains us. The second point that we can draw out from Esther is that God's promise is unfailing. God made promises to his people in the Old Testament to bless them, to protect them, and to provide for them. Esther's people were saved by God. He promises to protect his people, and through Esther, he does so. We sing this great song at our church that I really love called Yes and Amen. The bridge and chorus lyrics go as follows. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All your promises are yes and amen. Whenever we sing these songs in church, we repeat, repeat these phrases over and over again. And for me, each time I hear and sing these words, I'm reminded of the promises that Jesus makes us through his new covenant. That he promises freedom in heaven with him that spans an eternity. He promises a grace that we do not deserve, that is available for us to accept. All his promises are yes and amen. They are sure and they are firm. They are unwavering in the face of adversity. God's promise is unfailing. The third point we can draw out of Esther's story is her opportunity. When I read this passage, there's one verse that stands out to me. It stirs something in my spirit. Uh, verse 14, and who knows that you have come, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. For such a time as this. Mordecai speaks from such wisdom and desperation here. It is both an encouragement and a challenge for Esther. She is afraid and uncertain of what this calling means for her in her life. And Mordecai both empowers her and rebukes the fear that is holding her back 
by suggesting that God has a bigger plan for Esther than she ever could have planned for herself, bigger than she ever imagined, that she would step out in faith and courage to save her people. Esther has this opportunity thrown at her. She has to choose then how she responds to it. Now this example from Esther is a very extreme one. In Australia in 2020, it's un unlikely that we're gonna receive an opportunity like she does. But like Esther, we do have purpose and we do have calling. God made us all uniquely, intimately and intentionally. He designed us with different giftings, strengths and character. He put us in this world not by accident but for a purpose. Through the Bible there are a bunch of different things that God calls his people to do. Things we have a great opportunity to do in our everyday lives, especially at the moment. He calls us to love God and love others. To care for the broken, the widows, the orphans. To set the captives free. To share the news of Jesus and God's kingdom. To break the chains of the world and carry out justice. What better time than right now do we have to carry out these things? Our world is so broken right now. Back in April, Monash University launched a study to track the mental health effects of the coronavirus crisis in Australia. And they have found that there has already been a rise in anxiety and depression, among, depression amongst Australians. Researchers surveyed 1,200 Australians about how they were coping during the pandemic. Preliminary results showed a majority of participants registered mild levels of anxiety and depression, and about 30% of people showed moderate to high levels. I myself have been experiencing heightened levels of anxiety. According to Beyond Blue, on average, one in seven Australians will experience depression in their lifetime, and one quarter of Australians will experience an anxiety condition in their lifetime. So these numbers have already risen in this pandemic, just from April. There's been a whole other month since then. The aftermath of this pandemic will be a long and a difficult process, especially in relation to mental health and grieving um, the, the people who have been affected by this virus. What does this mean for us? What does this mean for the church for our church, yes, but also for the big C church, the church around the world. People need us. This is our time to share God's love on our doorstep. Now, I'm not encouraging you in any way to break restrictions that have been put in place, but do things that you can do while still maintaining these restrictions. Check in with a friend that you haven't heard from during this pandemic. Look out for older members of your community who may need more assistance. Meet your friend for coffee whilst maintaining proper social distance. Call your counsellor if you need help or ask a member of our church leadership team if you want recommendations of a counsellor. This week even, our church took part in a full 24 hours of prayer, which is pretty exceptional and some even fasted along with it. Prayer is this awesome weapon that we have in our tool belt. We can use prayer at any time. Anne even put out a challenge to our young people a few weeks ago to make 148 cards for the residents of a um, retirement home near us. There are so many opportunities around us in our everyday to do God's good work. The world needs God right now and we are his vessels. If you feel brave this week, if you want to step out in courage like Esther and in faith like Mordecai, ask God to give you an opportunity this week. Ask that scary question. Ask him to use you as his vessel. Bring us back some stories for story time over the next few Sundays. At the end of this period, we would love to be a church that was integral to the community that we are in over this time. Maybe we are here for such a time as this. Let me pray. 
God, we lift up this community here to you. We've just had this 24 hours where we prayed for our community and our world and our country. God, we pray that you are caring for us and those around us. God, we pray that you're giving us opportunities that maybe we don't see normally, where we can show your love to those who are with us. God, I pray that we can be so aware this week of your protection and your provision over us. Um, and Jesus, I just pray, um, as always, God, that you are a God of peace and that in these times with um, higher rates of anxiety and depression and uncertainty and fear, God, that you are bringing your courage to us, your strength to us, and you are bringing your peace to us. Amen.